where we, or Monday magic, let's stay on the magic train, um, where we look at uh, where our energy um, is a drain and we turn it and transmute it, transform it into an energy gain. Happy super full moon. Wow, I can't believe how lucky we're getting on these Mondays and having all this, the, this is the second consecutive super full moon. Ah, so what does that mean? That means that we bring some things to completion. That means that we have might have a little resistance, but a super full moon means that, that the moon is closest to the earth and we're water. So you know what it does to the tides. So yes, it does that with us too. It actually does that with all living things that are, are water because it has that draw, that pull. It's when we get the highest high tides or the lowest low tides. So think of that and be gentle because we want to lean into our strengths of the universe. And that is one of the strengths that we can lean into. Know that it's time to get those pesky projects done. Know that it's time to maybe take a look at where your boundaries are, or maybe it's time to complete on something that's not working for you because you are what matters. We must have our oxygen mask on us first before we can help anybody else. And I believe that this is a service world. So in order to be in service, first you must be in service to yourself. So how can you do that? How can you be in service to yourself? Often we often default to meditation, meditation, meditation. Yes, meditation, I believe, is the greatest tool to get you there. I believe it is absolutely the path of um, least resistance, the path that can give you that energy gain in almost every single situation. But before we can get there, we need to learn how to breathe. We can't go into meditation if we're stuck in a chest breath, which is activating our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight, flight, freeze. You know that saber tooth tiger? Yeah, that one that gets you jumping. We can't ever make a decision or have peace of mind or clarity of thought if we're in this breath. And the easiest way to know where you're breathing is by putting your hand there and your hand on your abdomen. Which hand is moving? I like to look at it as which hand are you feeding? It's that wolf feeding analogy that I've used previously. Whatever wolf we feed gets stronger. Is it the fight, flight, freeze breath? Is it the chest breath? Or is it the lower deep deep diaphragmatic breath where your hand is coming out and going back in naturally with the breath. One, one smooth loop of inhalation and exhalation. No pause, no jerks, no noise, just quiet. Mm -hmm. The disciple to the guru, Swami Veda, one of my teachers, my most beautiful teacher, um, would say it's like pouring oil. You do that slow pour. And then that inhale and the exhale. And the next place to start when we, when we get that, at, or even now, is to incorporate mindfulness. Mindfulness is a great step before meditation. Mindfulness for me is where the juice is. That's like where I wanted to learn more. It's the magic of mindfulness that I think that really intrigued me, really figuring it out, going, oh my gosh, how many times I catched myself with what the verbiage that was coming out of my mouth was like, that's not me. You know, when you, the saying, when you hang around, the, you become who you hang around with, your top five friends. Well, we can blame it on that, but we need to finger at us first, point to me first. It's me. It's me. It's you. You are the boss. It's nobody else. You are the boss. And if something isn't working for you, then yes, it's up to you to change it. So the notion is that there is something more here in life that you are here for. And that will come to fruition. That something, that someday, that some way, this is that awareness. That awareness that you go, come on, I'm, I'm here for more. 
I know I'm here for more. I know that I'm called to do this or be this. And that road might shift. But taking that action to that first step of awareness is mindfulness. It's the ability to be able to re, um, reflect as uh, rather than react. And sometimes that can be difficult, even after years and years of training, because we are human. We can, if we did react, we can reflect and then take the necessary course of action that goes along with that reaction, whether it's an apology or whether it's, uh, you know, figuring out understanding with the two, or maybe, you know, it's, it was just hands up. That's enough. That's enough. And creating the boundary and knowing that you need to make a change in a way that works for you. It doesn't matter where or how you develop your mindfulness. It does not matter where or how you develop your mindfulness. It is simply becoming aware within your mind. It doesn't even matter what you do. You could be painting, riding a bike, jogging. You could be uh, washing the dishes. You could be um, in yoga or prayer or therapy. Whatever that is for you, you can be doing whatever it is. It's all good. Any practice that offers you that ability for reflection is a great practice for mindfulness. And one of the greatest gifts is remembering that the other person has a mind too. And that that person's mind is not necessarily there to give you that reaction. But in some of my Dharma teachings as a Bodhisattva, sattva, Sometimes we, I do look at it as it is there to supply me that karmic ripening. It is there to draw me in to see how I'm going to plant the next seed. And if I'm going to meet force with force. Or if I'm going to meet force with compassion and understanding for the other person and their pain or their ego. And planting that new seed. And if I do fall into reaction, to apologize for my reaction and be in the gift of that communication, that situation, that person, place, or thing. A short example would be I've had difficulty with my neighbor. We've been side by side for 30 years. My backyard attaches to his front yard. And I asked, we, we decided we we're going to build a new fence this year. Last year, we decided that and prepared for it this year. And when we came back to the agreed upon height, he pulled back on it and he reneged on it. I wanted the fence a foot higher. He doesn't want the fence a foot higher. And I couldn't understand his need. I was asking him, what is your need? My need is a little greater privacy. What is your need? And he couldn't give me anything. He says, the fence is on my property. I get to do what I want with it. And I said, okay, good. I'm glad that we are where we're at. We've, we've settled this now. And it brought me to putting in 27 Abravate Thuja, very healing cedar trees that we have here in um, at Northwest Canada. Or south, I guess we're in the southern part of Canada, which would the U.S. calls Northwest. Um, and I thought, you know, what a gift. What a gift that was. Because I would have put my money into killing trees and putting up a fence, same old practice, maybe a foot higher, he would have agreed. But this way, I got to create a carbon solution by planting trees, which, which is totally, I'm an earth mama, which is totally in alignment with who I am. But that notion didn't come to me until I had a neighbor that was offering me resistance and I needed to come up with a new solution to fulfill my need. I'm ecstatic, absolutely ecstatic of the gift that he has given me. Didn't feel like it in the front end, but on the back end, I bow down and thank him for, you know, in my practice and, and offer that gift of resolution to anybody else in humanity. That openness of awareness brought me to a new level of, of, of um, mindfulness. The ability to slow down and step back, right? He created that void. It's like, nope, we're not doing that. That's it. Hands up. That's it. The end of, end, end of the fence conversation. And let me tell you, I, it took me everything not to, I, I just called them cranky. I said, the cranky, cranky, cranky. And that's okay. You have permission to be cranky. 
We all have a permission to be cranky, especially in these times. But we're really to take a look at what's really was going on. I believe I was being given a message that Deborah, what you really want is the trees. And it took me a little bit longer to get there. This is all part of mindfulness. And it's a great way to build our mental fortitude with all these 40 trillion bits per second going through our minds, not data processing. We don't really know what is stirring us up or stirring up the other person or stirring up the world. We, we, we don't really, we can't capture all that information. So what a gift to be able to slow down. Our mental mind is really our wealth mind. And that's why I built the, the um, Mind Gems. We've changed the name to Mind Gems Monthly Membership and see if that name fits. Where we come in and every month we excavate the, 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 our thought processes in such this way. And something is always sure to show up every month. It's really, it's really the greatest gift. So the bottom line is all mindfulness is good mindfulness, no matter how it shows up. So take the step into greater awareness and say, how is this person showing up for me to activate my mindfulness? How is this situation showing up to activate my mindfulness? Where's the space that I can step back and create that space and that, that void for thought for, or just rest and allow the universe to come in and supply that completion for me, for you? And go, wow, this is really the beauty of who we are and the vibration and the frequency that we begin to attract. Mindfulness offers us that higher vibration, that higher frequency, which then attracts that higher frequency. So there's gifts upon gifts upon gifts. And that's where the magic is with mindfulness. I'd like to invite you into um, my personal practice. I, I do one-on-one uh, -on -one treatments, working with advanced integrative energy healing with breath work, with some meditation, with some body walks, with trauma and addiction, and um, working with the limiting beliefs as a pro Psych K facilitator. And I also work with tuning forks to work with the gateways of the Chinese meridians. And uh, most recently, I've worked with plant essences in aroma acupoint therapy, working with the same lines of meridians to get into those gateways, to allow you to open up into um, and rebalance and repattern all those places that are potentially stuck or offering you some frustration, some irritation, some pain, and some suffering. My name is Deborah O'Neill. I'm the CEO and founder of BlissBee.me Integrative Holistic Health. I'm here to share because I love you and I care, and I invite you into my world. Let's do this work together. You are here for a reason and know who you are and why you are here and hold true to that. Thank you so much from the deepest place of love in my heart. Make it a great day. Enjoy this super full moon. Be gentle on yourself. And thank you for being here. <laughs>